Hi programmers, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will show you how to use Cursor AI for creating Node.js Express.js APIs. To get started, I'll be covering five topics. First of all, I'll be creating a simple endpoint in Express.js using Cursor AI. Then we'll configure Nodeman to run the application. Third is that we'll integrate this one with Swagger UI. Fourth is that we'll try connecting this one with the SQLite database and we'll seed some 20 records in it. And finally, we'll try launching the MongoDB Docker container and try connecting our Express app with it. Okay. So let's get started. First of all, let's see what is Cursor, Cursor AI. So Cursor AI is nothing but an ID provided by the Anthropic and it uses by default model that is Cloud 3.7 Sonnet version, okay, which looks like this one. So this ID is built on the top of VS Code and on the left hand side, you can see the exact project structure panel, which we see on VS Code. In between, you can see the code editor and the terminal. On the right hand side, you can see the match panel where the agent is selected as a default and auto selected as a default value as well, where you can or select multiple models, not only provided by Anthropic, but also Gemini or ChatGPT or something like that. To keep it simple, I'll just use the auto select. Now I'll be asking, can you help me creating a simple ExpressJS API example? Hello world. Let me hit it. Now it is telling that I couldn't find the project structure of Node.js, which will be created over here by running this command. So we got the package JSON. Now we need to install Express. No worries. It will be installing the Express and that index.js file over here. That's fine. Lovely. So let me run it. So it has running like Node.js server. So it is telling that that is running on localhost 3000. Okay, so let me go to localhost 3000 and check it. Yes, that is working fine. Perfect. Now, let me tell that should run in the background. That's perfectly fine. Hey, yes, that's working fine. Can you now configure the Nodemon? So let me quickly stop this. And it is first installing the Nodemon for us and updating all project structure. Let me accept this. NPM run dev. Perfect. That is working fine. Let me quickly go back and refresh this. This is working fine. Perfect. Can you integrate the Swagger UI? So it's installing the Swagger UI Express. It understood our project structure first and based on that, for it is configuring those kind of stuff. All right. So it has updated the index.js file and added all the docs there for Swagger. And if I accept it, it's saying that we need to go to slash API docs. Let me go back here, check. That is for not there, nothing is here. So I just need to test it here. So first of all, I have to run this npm pm run dev. So that is working fine. Let me hit it now. Perfect. So we can see that API is working fine. Boom. Now I'll tell that, can you create to do's API, to do's crud APIs. Yes, it is creating those APIs and it will create all those APIs inside this index.js file, which is getting more bigger and bigger. So in the next one, we are asking it to create, perform the solid best practice set that is solid principles or dry principle or something like that. Let me quickly hit it. So it has over here, it is like created the in-memory data storage which is fine. So let me quickly go and this one and try checking it. So we got all the to-do's over here. Fine. Now, we I don't have any data over here. So let me quickly ask, can you seed 20 records in the memory? So it is updating that index.js and then created this one. So we got sample to-do's over here which is fine. Let me accept this. If I go back and hit it, we got all to do's over here. 22 groups. Perfect. Now, second point is that I will be asking that the best practices, can you implement the solid and dry principles? Now, if I ask that one, it will be creating controllers, services, models, routes, middlewares, configuration file, each everything for us. SRC will be having all the configuration and each everything. 
All right, so it has performed all the operations on behalf of us. It created that model, services, controllers, route, configuration file, main application has been updated and each everything. Let me accept this and go back to check whether everything is working fine or not. So let me go here on this one and hit it. Go back to those, try running it. Yep, we got those things running. So where it is data is coming from now, it's coming from that services. And we have that C data after this one. So we are seeding that data from here. Now I will be asking, can you connect the express with SQLite DB and seed the 20 records in it. So I'll just quickly stop the server and now it will be helping us to installing that database. All right, so what it did was, first it created the configuration file, which is like configuration file, like database.js over here, okay? Now it has updated that todo.js file, okay? So this is like todo.js file has been updated. And now, which is like from models, todo.js file, this was also updated. Now finally, like it is, has the service being updated. So if I go back to service, now this time, we can ask that should be removed and that's how we can check that data is running or not. So if I go and now run this, see over here on this particular folder structure, we don't have the SQL or I would say SQL like kind of extension or the file over here. As soon as I run this one, it should go and run the seed. Yes, ran the seed and we got SQL like database and all 20 records are seeded into the database. Okay. Finally, let me go back over here and try refreshing this and let's see what we will get. We get look at our third operations. Yes, we got all the crowd operations. Boom. Now, finally, we'll see that. Okay. Can you replace the SQLite DB with MongoDB Docker container like this? Run it. Yes, it can help us on that. And it has created the Docker Compose file, which is this one. We got those things there. Now it has updated the database.js file, which is here to connect with the Mongoose, which is good. That's fine. And definitely it will be updated to .js to point to the new MongoDB container, something like that. And it updated all the credentials, all the routes there in the index.js. If I go and accept this, before running this Docker Compose up command, just wanted to open the Docker extension, which will be here. So I don't have any image. Here, let me run it. And now it is saying that person would like to accept this one. I don't have the MongoDB installed in my output set, not MongoDB. I don't have the MongoDB image. Now, so that is pulling from the Docker Hub. So first you will see that the MongoDB image will be pulled over here. And then once we got that image, the container will be running. So you can see that the image has been pulled and the Docker is up and running, which is this one over here. So it is giving me those credentials, telling that you can test those credentials and or you can put those there and then you can test it. So let me quickly check whether everything is working fine or not. Let me quickly stop those stuff and check. So I just quickly go and run npm run. So if I go back here, check it. Let me hit it. Now all are coming from the MongoDB database. See this one. So the data got changed as well because this time it is a kind of NoSQL database document type. So we got documented database, which is coming from the MongoDB. And that's pretty much it. You can, that's how you can connect to the database of MongoDB using the cursor AI. But the thing is that if you go to Docker Compose file, you can see that all your environment variables are exposed in Docker Compose file, which is not a good practice. So I would say that I want to secure the environment variables in the .n file. So we need to create .n file, which we don't have right now. So 
I think it will create on behalf of us or it will give us in the last once everything is done. So it has updated the db.js file because this one is coming from that environment variables now. So we'll accept all those files by selecting accept all here. And now everything is being mapped via the environment file. Okay. So let me quickly accept this. Now I don't have end file, so I'll just quickly create dot end file the root structure root directory which is created over here and then I'll just we check whether it's applied or not no it's not so I don't know why it's not being applied you can just copy this paste it here that should be fine now okay so let me stop this and check whether everything is working fine or not first of all what I'm gonna do is that I'll just open zsh and then docker compose down I'll just quickly remove the containers first and then rerun the docker compose up okay so that ran now i will go and then run the npm run dev let me check npm run dev here so let me try one more time here yeah that is working fine all right guys so that's how you know you can save those credentials but the thing is that and this particular end file is being not typed with the dot ignore file, but we have to tell that cursor AI you should not read those files as well. So if I ask that cursor AI, can you read dot or I would say can you tell me the value of this in end file like this one? I cannot see the actual value of MongoDB in the because that is why listed in the .ignore file, which means it is not tagged by the version control. That is why contains the sensitive information. It should not be read. And that's how, you know, you can secure those files. I'll just ask one more thing that can you please create cursor ignore file and ignore the file to be read as well so it will be creating dot uh, ignore file as well so this one for the safe side just create this one and that's how you know you can ignore that file as well and that's how you can save the credential and by default and one of the most fun point is that what you have to do is go to settings and go to settings and go to cursor settings and go down and you should enable this one privacy mode so what it is telling that all code remains private so it is clearly telling that if on, none of your code will be stored by us. It is clearly telling that one. So we can see, we can read all those instructions there. And that's how you can save all your file structure, project structure there. And I would highly recommend just use Cursor AI for the development purposes. And that's how you can run your application much faster and you'll become like a really good developer. And make sure that you should follow best practices such as solid principles, try principles, and the security best practices as well. In the next video, I'll try creating the other projects such as ReactJS, Python, Fast API, Python, Django APIs, and try connecting that one with the AWS. And let's see how those things we're going to implement with the Cursor AI. That will be fun. And all series will be found inside that Cursor tutorial. If you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe and do let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching. See you around. Bye-bye.